Dear everyone, so happy to be here. Uh, this is my fifth time in Africa, but first time in Cape Town. And I, I'm actually I'm more a programmer, not a talker. And uh, the only reason I'm going to conferences is because people ask me nicely, and I have a hard time saying no, or if there's a new place that I haven't been to before. So one of the common questions I get, so where are you from? And when I answer Finland, that's not the answer I'd expect. They want to know, so how did you get involved with computers and why? And uh, I did find this that shows one of the uh, ga uh, games I made uh, uh, while learning to, to program. So this is an assembler. I wrote this in hex. It's uh, 4K. And you could do a lot of things in 4K before that you can't do anymore. And uh, the, the, uh, you can actually play this. There is a uh, ABC80 emulator where this game is on the net. You can just download and play it. The first game I wrote was, of course, Space Invaders, or a clone of, there, of that. But uh, I may disappoint a lot of people now because I will not talk about games. So let's see if I can get out of this. So, uh, my current project is uh, MariaDB, which is um, basically a, a branch of MySQL. Uh, although when Oracle announced that uh, they will buy uh, Sun, me and a lot of other people, basically all the core engineers left Sun and started to work on MariaDB to ensure that the MySQL code that I created would always be free. So it's a, uh, so uh, who is using MySQL here? Okay, about one third. And how, how many are using MariaDB? Okay, that's good. And for those who are using MySQL, in, just so you know, it takes about 15, 20 seconds to move from MySQL to MariaDB. And you get something <laughs> that takes faster, uh, more secure, and above all, free now and forever. And they also uh, easy upgrades, because uh, it's actually easier to move from MySQL to MariaDB than from between two MySQL versions. So. <laughs> so this talk is about the uh, features in MariaDB that makes it usable for big data. And, um, we have a lot of the different things who makes it, uh, allows it to do both do scale up and uh, scale out. We have lots of community contributors, as you saw in the talk, talk uh, by Philip yesterday. yesterday. And um, I'm happy to say, say, see that during the last year, we have got more contributions to MariaDB than MySQL had got during the, its whole lifetime. So we're doing good. And the, the most interesting thing in the latest version of MariaDB that we also have a Oracle compatible layer. So you can run Oracle store procedures in MariaDB. So those of you who are still staggering of how shall we get rid of Oracle, here's a, a solution. <laughs> and uh, these are the two entities in the MariaDB world, where the MariaDB corporation, where who employs most of the people who origi originally worked on MySQL, lots of, and they handle the economics, and then we had the MariaDB Foundation that I created to ensure that MariaDB should always be free. And how we did that was that the, the Git repository where MariaDB uh, resides, that's owned by the foundation. So whatever happens with the corporation, there, there is no way that they can close it from from the community. The, the, the thing that makes me most angry with MySQL is that I can't get a patch in into MySQL. All development closed, and uh, there's no way for the community to work with them. Uh, when it comes to big data, so the, and this is about one of the big changes I've seen in the industry over the uh, last 10 years, that. Uh, 
open source is really winning. Most of the big data solutions, um, except maybe big data on uh, Google, are coming from open source. And also, they, I'm pretty sure that the big data at Google is also based on open source. And that makes me very happy for being an open source advocate and working with open source. Uh, NoSQL has also been uh, in the hype lately and, and over the years. I think it's a good solution for some things, but uh, not something that scales. And, um, and it's also too restricted that you can solve one thing very, very well but uh, you can't solve something in general. So it's a very crude tool in that way. It, but it does, did solve a lot of things that the relational databases didn't do. But SQL is catching up. With MariaDB, you can, and also with Postgres and others, you can do many of the things that was before exclusively um, looked upon on NoSQL databases. So we have uh, JSON support. Uh, uh, replication is really good. One of the reasons people in the early days looked at NoSQL was that there were a fatal bug in the uh, MySQL replication, so it didn't scale at all. And we fixed that, fixed that about, uh, ten, let's say, eight years ago in, in MariaDB, and now we have uh, something that scales as good as most NoSQL solutions. We also have Column Store and Spider. I will talk about those and, and Myrox. So there's also reason to not use uh, NoSQL, but uh, I will just skip the slides to, to go to the more interesting parts. So uh, MariaDB is a sustainable product. We do lots of releases, one release basically every year. 10.3 was RC in uh, last week. And uh, the, 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 here you can see the different features that are in this, each release. Can you see the slides from back there, by the way? From the back? Yeah. OK. A couple of guys with and girls with good eye, eyesight. That's good. We need those. So here are some of the big data features we added in 10.2 and 10.3. So we have uh, we had, uh, com uh, compressed events in the replication stream so that, that um, the data on the slave it takes, takes, takes much less space. Norm, we have always had a compressed protocol, but the problem with the compressed protocol, when we store things on the slave, it takes space. So we, we fixed that. We added, they added the MyRock storage, storage engine. Uh, that's what Facebook is using instead of in a DB nowadays, and mostly because uh, of the compression. So it's, uh, Roughly same speed as in a DB in a lot of, lot of cases, but you win, speed, uh, you win so much space. And when you have uh, Facebook, I don't know how many ten or ten, tens of thousands of computers, if you can reduce those to one-fifth, that's a big saving. And that's why my rocks is important for them. For them. So we also have compressed columns. Uh, and the other ones is be, will be on future sli slides. So we added instant add column uh, to in the DB. Most of the op op alt table operations in MariaDB is online. In other words, you can do that, do the alt table, and while it works in the background, you can still work with the table. But, we, uh, but the add column was so important, so we added, so now it's basically instant, doesn't take any time. That also means that it's instant on the slave. So that's a nice feature. The compressed columns, you can just add uh, attribute compressed, and then you then uh, compressed on, on storage. And the nice thing is also that uh, when we move around it within the database, it's compressed until it has to be uncompressed. For example, sending it to the client. But if you replicate that, it will be compressed the whole way. So I, st st I work, uh, I started my life with computers with uh, machines with very little memory. I really have a passion for doing things in, in small sizes, and uh, I like performance. And that has always been part of uh, what my SQL and MariaDB is about. We also added ASOV, which is uh, how many knows about ASOV? 
It's like a basic time machine, and uh, this is perfect to put on the slave. So you just uh, create the table with the system versioning, and then you can go back in time any, to just see how was the, the data one year ago, two years ago. Really nice for, for the cases when you have an attack with a hacker, and, or actually a cracker is, is the right word, and you want to know what did he actually see. So you go to the audit log, look at the query, then you go do a query to see what did the hacks actually get out of it. You can do a lot of other things also. And we are going to, in next version, we will also do it for drop table and uh, an alta table. So currently, if you do an alta table, the history that starts from there. And uh, even Oracle can't do over uh, DDLs, but we will support that in the next version. We have most of the code ready. We just couldn't get it into the RC because we wanted to have it stable enough. So the, one of the unique things has been my SQL and we had, uh, was always that we had a very extensive and flexible replication. In MariaDB, it's even more flexible. And uh, most people doesn't even know really what you can do. And this is all, all about uh, read scaling. Basically, my, with MariaDB, you have perfect read scaling for in, any size. So this is kind of the normal setup. And for those who can't read, uh, orange means slave. So uh, we, uh, for booking.com, we did something we, we called the bin log server. You put it in, in between, and uh, that stores not the data, but only the logs. Uh, the benefit of this one is that less work uh, for the master. It doesn't have to send, send to everything. And because all these slaves are 100% identical, you can just promote anyone, anybody instant to master very easily. And of course, you can have slaves on slaves and do lots of strange things. Uh, and we have some users who like to do uh, like pain, so this is not something I, I um, like to recommend, but you still can, can do it and people can do it. So, do it. so you put things in the ring, and that means that uh, uh, you, can, you can basically update any, uh, any of the masters. Of course, you can't do conflicts, but if you know what you are doing, you can get very efficient handling of those, and even over a long distance. And each, each of these can have a slave, so if uh, the, something fail, you can just have the slave take over the master. Uh, this is a more complex setup of the same thing, but this can handle any failure. So you, in the ring, you had a problem that if something goes uh, out, you basically lose replication. You don't lose data, but uh, the whole replication cluster doesn't replicate until you put something in. The nice thing with MySQL and MariaDB replication is that uh, <coughs> You can put in slave any, any time, as long as you store the logs. So that uh, if you have a new co computer or, or slave, you can take it out for one week, one year, and then you just attach it and it will, it will get the data and continue from where it was. Uh, Galera, how many is here are using Galera? One, couple, three brave souls. Uh, the, this is actually really nice. It's a multi-master network. If something goes down, it automatically reconfigures itself. If the network fa uh, fails, the bigger part of the network will survive. So this is the easy uh, setup. This one, you have to use a lot of filters to not ensure that things doesn't replicate double, double. In the ring, it goes automatic, and Galera is also automatic. We also have multi-source replication, and this is kind of uh, uh, interesting in the sense, sense that you have two masters with different data and then you replicate to, to one slave. But because these are uh, uh, um, different and they are running in different domain, domains, the replication stream is uh, totally in parallel. They don't have to wait for each other. In MariaDB, we always try to ensure that the, what you have on the slave is always committed in exactly the same order as on the master, so that you have, never can get a view of things that didn't exist. 
It means you don't have to care about that. And we remember that so even in the slave of uh, underneath, things are, are done on the replication streams in, as fast as possible. And because replication is uh, totally parallel on the slave, uh, usually the slave is faster than the master. So you, do, you don't get the lags that you have uh, get used to in MySQL with, replica with replication. <coughs> this one is a little outdated in the sense that not many uh, knows about it or uses it, but uh, this is what I created MySQL for. So I think it's kind of interesting. So the merge table is uh, currently works only for my eyes, but it's easy to um, extend if you ever, ever need that. So merge table is that you basically create a map that these tables, they're identical, use them as one. And the map is just internally, actually, just a list of the tables. And you can have many maps at the same time. This allows you that if you have lots of tables with, with data for each month, that you do a map for three months, six months, one year. And then by using different tables, you can do different statistics. And what we used that uh, in, in the past was that uh, we created, uh, using these maps, we created summary tables for three months, six months, and one year. And uh, when we did queries, we always first queried the summary tables, which basically instant because they are pretty small. And, and only when the user wanted to see, uh, these numbers doesn't make sense, you can instantly go and look at the, the real transactions. And this allowed uh, me to basically handle big data uh, from 81, uh, to the 90s, or machines that are not as powerful as we had today. So uh, column store uh, is uh, one of our solutions for really big data, in other words, the petabytes. So um, it's, uh, it's massive parallel, it stores things on nodes, so that instead of, uh, so the, the cost is basically the network and not the disk and all the nodes are working in parallel. It stores things in, in per columns, and I have one slide that a little bit explains how uh, things, are, things are working internally. So uh, the nice thing is that you can have, the, the data nodes are below, and you can have many MariaDB nodes to the data. So you can get performance either by adding more nodes, then you can handle more data and faster, because the SQL processing is done on the MariaDB server, where you can have many those attached to the data. And uh, I don't know how you can see it by, uh, in, the, in the back, but uh, the, actually, it's even small here in, in, in this. <laughs> yeah, but uh, the, so, uh, how columns to work internally, it took me a long time to, this is, not, this is a project that other people in the company is working on, not me. It took a long time to understand. So how do you actually do this? So what they do is that they store things in extent per column. So they store eight million rows in one extent, and, when they, uh, and then they create another extent. Another, and they do it, this for every column and on all nodes. And, um, and, 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 uh, and if you have two columns, you, uh, you know the, the column store knows that row number two here matches row number two here. So basically everything is on the same level, but, but per column. Having a per column allow, allows better compression, and that's why you get a two to five times compression on it. And, and this extent, for, uh, or for each extent, we also store information about uh, mean value, max value, uh, and some other statistics. Uh, uh, and that allows us to very quickly skip extent when we see the query. And all this goes in parallel. And uh, so column store is uh, something that is for anal analytics, and it works uh, well. We have customers using it for really big databases. And um, you can just basically add one, uh, more nodes as you see fit, just to get better performance. And you can even do joins within the clusters. So you can combine, combine this with InnoDB table that is in 
uh, on the Maria DB server together with column store that is externally and it basically moves the data that is needed from the server to the column store to be able to do that. We also have a, a community supported storage engine, a Spider, that um, uses partitioning uh, and store things in nodes. And uh, I have a picture of that. So the, all the nodes, they are normal, a normal MariaDB server that is just set up, but is dedicated for, for the cluster. You can have as many of those uh, as you want. And uh, when the MariaDB asks, or you have a query, it goes um, to the partitioning, and there uh, it, it knows where to send the query if you have a primary key or something it can locate. If it doesn't, it sends it everything to parallel. So uh, this works good for primary key lookups and uh, for group buys and every, and, and, and uh, we have some customers who are using this and uh, they have been able to replace uh, a hundred node Cassandra cluster with, with, with seven spider nodes. And we have Tencent games who have all their games are, are, are based on having spider for the storage. I have some statistics about that in the end. So when you, they, they, they create a new game, they basically give the game developers, here, here is your spider stories, use it. And they are working with us to improve uh, spider in MariaDB. And you create a, spy, uh, a spider table basically just by saying that uh, uh, here's the different partitions and on which server is partition is. So it's, um, we, we need, uh, it works good, we haven't heard, uh, I mean, we know that Tencent is running thousands of, of, your, of, of, of nodes with this. It's a little bit tedious because you first need to create the table on the nodes and then you do the mapping, but then it works. And you, you can also store mirroring of the data, so even if some nodes go down, you still have the data. Now I'll probably doing the same mistake like Kent by going way too fast compared to the number of slides. But so when you're looking at the, uh, uh, at the big data, actually storage is normally not the problem. Um, but um, it's uh, more what happens when things fail. And if, assuming you have a terabyte uh, database on, on a hard disk and uh, one sector goes and you need to copy it, that can take a day, maybe with indexing it, take, it takes, uh, can take a week. And if you have a one petabyte of data, basically you can, it can take a month or two just to get the data back. And there's lots of people who say that, um, or the opinion that you just have a backup, don't think about repairing. With big data, you can't really do repair. You just go over to a backup. So that's something that you need to think about. So you, you, you need to have hot standbys to be able to survive. But also that uh, I like the note from the previous um, speaker that what is big data? Uh, when I was uh, working on the original version of uh, uh, MySQL, and actually the predecessor of MySQL, I was working with big data. But uh, I had a Spark, the, the ABC80, that was my first machine, I had 8K of, of memory, and I could do amazing things, like games. Um, so MySQL was originally developed on a Sun Spark station with 32 meg of, of RAM, and the first hard disk we had was 20 meg, but we were still able to having raids and handling the data that we needed for the Swedish company that was in the, in the gigabytes um, uh, sizes. But it was, uh, I spent eight years working on kind of this kind of data, and it was during those years that I optimized all parts of what would become MySQL uh, to be fast. And that also when the first time MySQL was released, even if we had, didn't have transactions, people didn't, really didn't have a problem because it was in incredibly stable just because I already been using it for uh, 15 years. 
And I also think that uh, big data solutions are, is a hype. Uh, and my definition of big data is if you can't store it on your home machine, or if you can't store it on the home machine, it's not big data. And uh, considering that um, uh, Seagate are releasing uh, 18 terabytes disk, disk, disks this year, you can put those into RAID, you have then uh, 50 tera. So all these things for, that we have from GitHub, you can actually run it yourself. I'm sorry, that's not big data, Philip. <laughs> and I'm very excited about the 3D exploit memory from Intel that is coming out by the end of the year. Basically, eight terabytes uh, in, uh, um, that you can use like a hard disk, thousand times faster than SSDs, and that will be under $2,000. That will change databases drastically. And you put 10 of those in, uh, in a rack, and you don't need Google Big Data anymore. <laughs> for, for these small data sets of up to 100 terabytes. After 100 terabytes, we are still Big Data for a couple of years. Things are moving. I still think that SQL is important. That's why I'm working on, on MariaDB. Uh, I spend most of my time programming and leading the team. And um, the reason I think that SQL matters is that, uh, and actually I think that on-premise matter uh, is that you have more privacy, you have more control, and the nice thing with SQL is that it's the most adaptive database uh, language that exists today. You can just go, if things change, you don't have to change the database. And because we have these different storage engines in, in MariaDB, and sooner or later, all your performance will be de defined of how your data is stored. We have, uh, on M18, uh, last week, we had a, uh, have a company, Brightlit, who were showcasing how to run MariaDB on GPUs. And, uh, and they can basically scan terabytes of data in sub-seconds by having parallel CPUs. And, but you still have the same interface, everything works as before, just faster. Here's some uh, big databases that I use in my SQL or MariaDB. ServiceNow had a showcase on M18, the MariaDB conference in New York, where they had uh, for the first time published the size of the database they are using. So they're running 25 billion queries per hour. And they have 85,000 databases. We have uh, uh, people storing the, uh, the human DNA sequences in MySQL. Booking.com, I use both MySQL and MariaDB. Uh, Tencent, which I mentioned, they have 100 terabytes of data uh, in Spider, just about big data. And uh, they have 2,800 spider nodes. And uh, if you're ever playing Call of Duty or Legion of Legions, you're using spider. And of course, most of the big companies uh, that you heard about, uh, Twitter, LinkedIn, Google, uh, Facebook, Wikipedia, all are using MySQL or MariaDB. So that's uh, what I have. And before you ask questions, I think I will follow up with uh, the idea that Kent gave me that we need stories. And uh, being here in South Africa, you may have a hard time imagine life in Finland. So I will tell a very, very short story to describe how things are. Think about a dark, stormy night. That's how a, big story, a good story starts. Um, you can find me in the cellar. It's dark. The only light you can see is the green, warm light coming out from the monitor. I'm old school. <laughs> and when the day ends, I touch the monitor, make the light a little bit less. I take, I take a bottle. Pour a little bit of liquid and think to myself, in the night, in a dark room, nobody can see me drinking black vodka. <laughs> I 
And if somebody wants to taste after my talk, you're welcome. <laughs> so, questions? I do as of clauses add a lot of expense to select statements is the first part of my question. And the second part is how many daughters do you have? <laughs> did, did, did you get the first part of the question? Um, as of clauses, um, do, yeah, do they make a select statement a lot more expensive? Um, you know, when you said you want to look back in time, um, are the, is it more expensive to look back in time than to look at the current state, is the first half of the question? Uh, uh, it's, uh, basically, uh, with ASOV, we never delete anything. We just uh, uh, update, is ba basically, is creating a copy, a delete, is marking is deleted. So, it's as basically same speed to access current data as all data. Okay, so it's a lot like Datomic where yeah. it just accretes. Okay. You, know, you, you, you pay a little bit for the current data, of course, and that's why the, the, the replication structure are so important that you can have any structure, then, then you have one slave where you put as of on, and then you ensure that you have enough uh, space. Oh, and and you then you can run queries there. Okay, and do you have a third daughter? We have a Do you have a third daughter? <laughs> no, don't, don't worry, it's a joke. Okay. Um, I'm just asking about your programming languages. Yeah. A lot, a lot of, I'm, I'm sure, of what you do in MariaDB um, handles uh, parallel processing. Mm -hmm. And um, what do you use now? And um, with the new languages that have, have arrived over the years, do you see a better language for parallel processing? Yeah. So when I created MySQL in uh, 95, that was my uh, first multi-threaded program. And uh, I tried to solve the issues I had. And uh, I saw a big need for what I needed to be handle, handle lots of users at the same time. And that's why I uh, initially had uh, the solution that one thread per connection. In MariaDB, you can also decide, uh, say that you want to have a thread pool who handles all of those. Because when you have 500,000 uh, users on the small machines, then changing of uh, processes takes most of the time. So the thread pool will help. So uh, in this kind of environment, and MySQL was designed for the web, and uh, we never had the need to be able to split a query into uh, different um, uh, groups or do that par parallel processing. We are totally focused on handling lots of users. But um, you always have customers who have demands of doing things more in parallel. So the nice thing with both Spider and Column Store is that, that we send a query to the nodes and they process it. So the no more nodes you have, the more things you get in parallel. So we get, so that's the solution we have currently for car parallel processing. So then you, you have to use Column Store on Spider. We're also working on a new storage engine that will be a transaction. Uh, we're optimized for transactions. This is optimized for analytics, and Spider is kind of in between. And then we will have parallel on that. Um, we also have a project of changing some of the design issues I did in, in 96 of how we store things uh, to maybe able to do all, also parallel query within the engines. And the um, issue was, was that I did a small mistake that um, all our expression tree, trees are uh, classes and we, we, we call them items. And, but they, this, uh, to, be, be, to do things really, really fast, I store results in the items. But that means that they can't be shared. So we have, a, we have a, one of our de developers is basically at this moment working on to store things in different place to make this shared. And as soon as that has been done, then the next step is to start to doing things more in parallel. But um, the thing is also that if you have 1,000 users, you really don't want to have queries that run in parallel because that slows down everything. So it's a balance. Hi. <clears throat> Hi. Um, you've given us some compelling reasons to use uh, MariaDB. Are there some 
applications or use cases where you think MySQL would be a better solution? None. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if, if you like Oracle, then of course. I mean, they're, they're also the vendor problem. Currently, uh, we, we see that, uh, that the problem with Oracle is that, first, if you want to ever develop the, uh, anything on MariaDB your, uh, yourself to fix or add something, uh, Oracle removed uh, most of the new test cases, so you can't verify that your code works. And the other part, they're also removing things from the server. So I, in, uh, at, at some time, I created uh, the, the, or added the option to make it, uh, let you choose should there be one thread per connection or one thread per query. And Oracle removed that and made that a paid for feature. We have that in MariaDB. So basically all paid for features that exist in MySQL, we have free versions of MariaDB. Uh, we also had the default in all distributions. So, um, if you're using MySQL, you basically have to go to Oracle site and use something that nobody else is going to use in the future. If you want to do that, that's okay, I assume. Um, if, you, if you use the um, as of clause, um, you will see the data as that's at, at that specific point in time. Will that take the structure in consideration as well? Okay, I, I didn't get that, so could you pre please repeat? Yes, yeah. so the as of will uh, show me the data as it looked at that point in time. Yes. Will, will that take any structural changes to the, to the tables in consideration? No, 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 no changes. And also that you can have, you can of course do like, because this as of is per table, so you can have um, this table as of this time joined with this same table at another time, joined with another table with another time. So one of the test things with that as of is good or at, at this. Assuming you have a, that you can't do normally with the database. Assuming you have a, have a table where you have uh, all your employers and their salaries. And uh, when salary changes, you update the, the salary. Now the question you want to see, uh, how has the expenses for the company grown during last year, uh, in this year compared to last year? That's a perfect query for it as of. You just take it, uh, your, your employee table, one year ago, joined with currently, and you have, a, have everything. So it's a really nice feature. And before that, this only available in commercial, closed source, extremely expensive databases. You can send me a check instead, that works. <laughs> um, you spoke about the compatibility layer between and the upgrade path moving from MySQL to MariaDB. Uh, um, if you are running less than MySQL 5.7, basically it takes two, three seconds. We are compatible on the, on the, on the wire, uh, on the disk format, uh, and on the syntax. In, basically 99%. In we are practical, pra in all practical cases. So when Red Hat two years ago, or was it two or three years ago, they basically changed from instead of supplying MySQL, they supplied MariaDB. And uh, we didn't get any complaints for the 100,000 people that was silently upgraded without them knowing that they're not running MariaDB instead of MySQL. <laughs> and I think that's, tells a lot about the compat compatibility. So the only if you are using MySQL 8.0 that is totally different and is not really compatible with MySQL 5.7, there you have to do a dump and restore. On this SQL level, level we are, but we are not gonna use what um, some of the solutions they, did, they do in MySQL 8.0 because you have basically a single point of failure to lose all your data. They have a, no a central uh, dictionary without any backups or anything else. So if you get uh, crashed in any of those tables, either because of programming error, user doing something stupid, or a disk error, all your data is gone. I don't want a, such a solution in MariaDB. I think in the worst case, you should lose something in one file, and uh, preferably only on that sector. So we have good, uh, lots of tools to repair things. And in terms of compatibility backwards from MariaDB back to something like a Pecona and MySQL, which are keeping the same states. I mean, um, we are adding, I mean, we have, a, according to uh, 
Google big data, we have 65 developers, we're adding lots of features. We can't go back and add all those features in MySQL, especially when Oracle doesn't want our patches. So feature-wise, we are, we are trying to ensure that we are same on disk and same on wire. So you can take any a MariaDB client, it did work with everything, any MySQL client or Percona client will work, work on MariaDB. So all that works. But uh, it's, it's impossible for us to be uh, backward compatible with MySQL, especially when we first add a feature like uh, timestamp uh, with, with uh, higher precision, and Oracle adds the same feature, different syntax, different storage format. So we, what we did had, had to do, we also had to support the storage format they, they did uh, after us. So we are, we are concerned of making it triviality to move to MariaDB. We don't care about going to back something that will disappear within a couple of years. Cool. But you can always dump and restore. That works. Last question. Um, hi. So um, you're, you obviously have a relationship with uh, Facebook, uh, Alibaba, Google, and that. Yeah. And um, how do you manage their requirements for their systems with, which do not line up with the normal person who's not doing big data? And so so uh, we have, uh, with, with uh, Google, we have got a couple of patches when they started to use uh, MariaDB. Uh, they gave us some encryption patches after th that was two years ago. We haven't heard much from what they're doing with MariaDB internally. As far as I know, they are, they are using it. Facebook, uh, we are working together with Facebook on MyRox, so we have one of our developers uh, totally focused on, on ensuring that uh, MyRox works good and the, all those patches are shared with Facebook. So there we have a good relationship. They also sponsor us for, for doing certain things. Alibaba, on the other hand, uh, they are working on our, co on our code, giving us uh, uh, weekly patches, uh, and they are working as uh, basically as a close contributor and wanted to do more and more. And the same thing, same with Tencent and some other companies. So that's why we are going forward. And uh, the reason, for example, why Tencent and Alibaba is uh, working on, on us, and as far as I know, planning to switch to MariaDB is because they tried to work with Oracle. Oracle refused to take their patches without any reasoning, and we don't do that. So uh, what, what we do is that um, we can either work with a customer and add what they needed to MariaDB, we can work with the community, and uh, we are willing to take any patches that makes MariaDB better uh, for the general population and doesn't destroy things for anybody else. We are flexible in doing things. And if somebody wants to have do something really, really strange, then we help them get it in with preferably the loadable modules so they don't make things uh, hard, harder for other people. So we are working as any other uh, open source project. All plans we do are public. Anybody can participate easily. All our de developers are found on, on a free node. You can come in and chat with everybody, tell that I have this problem, and we can tell you that uh, either how to fix it, here's the code, here's what you need to do, we can help you with the architecture, or we can, uh, if you have money, we can find people who can do that uh, for you so to ensure that you get what you need. Uh, hi, I was, I was just wondering, uh, with regards to the spider columnar storage, what's the underlying file format that you guys implemented for that? You mean uh, with column store? Yes, for column store. The yeah, uh, yeah so let's see, I had the slide for that. I mean, they have their own, uh, column store was an uh, old project that the uh, company was working on for 10, 15 years, 10 years at least. And uh, they, they went bankrupt and uh, uh, because they thought that, and this is true quote, we have a relationship with, 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 uh, with Oracle and they will not let us go bankrupt. And uh, in, the, in the end, uh, when things didn't go, go forward, they started to work with us, but they couldn't sell the company, so they gave us the code to be able to um, ensure that their customers wouldn't uh, suffer because of this unfortunate uh, event 
but we have added more developers on Column Store and taking it forward. So it's, it's fully open source um, uh, and has uh, basically a format that is described on the slides, and the, the slides will be available from the conference somehow. And we also have uh, technical slides of the in, how it in, works internally. Thanks very much, Monty.